I've run a lot of medium length campaigns in my time, and we're talking like module length, uh, with a bit either side. And over the years, we've mostly kept the players between levels 1 to 9 or 10, uh, or in the non-level games, uh, beginner to uh, medium sort of skill and abilities. So I told my regular players that I would run them a high level campaign, so they had a chance to use those big spells and do anything they wanted. And this led them to do exactly that. This is the tale of five adventurers starting at level 18 and I running the third ed adventure for Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Bastion of Broken Souls. This is a third edition uh, standalone adventure that I'll be telling the tale of and there will be huge spoilers uh, for this adventure and lots of jumping around the plains. If you are a player and know you will be taking part in this adventure, then I suggest you stop now and come back once you've finished and see how our group fared compared to yours. If you have done this adventure before, I'd love to hear how my team compared to yours. The general backstory for these characters for this adventure is that uh, they had started all together at level one in general. Maybe some of them were killed off, maybe some of them joined a little later, uh, but all the adventurers have been travelling together for a number of years, and then for the last few, they've gone off and done their own. They're level 18. They've run a, run a kingdom. They've studied high-level magic. They've been at peace and just had to do what they've needed to do, occasionally calling on one or two others, but never really needing to bring the whole group together because they could handle most problems. But once a year, they do like to meet up for old time's sake in the plain of Yisgard to fight shoulder to shoulder with each other and some of their fallen companions and catch up afterwards. Now Toral wide for the last few months, all the children in the realm have been born with no spark of life. The child appears healthy, but there is no life in them. This seems to be all across all areas and all races, and the priests of all deities have been trying to ask what's going on, but all their prayers are met with silence. No one seems to have an answer. For this mission, the players and characters are Ross, who will be playing Mac, a male stone child fighter with levels in Swashbuckler. Rita will be playing as Hot Daniel, a male Luxo bard. Ben will be playing as Ben the Destroyer, a male catfolk rogue. Rowan will be playing as Gatter, a male Ellen's scion with prestige class levels in Cerebral Mancer. And Mitch will be playing as Jess, a female known cleric of Gal Glittergold with Trickery Domain. Our heroes will start this mission on the Cadet Good Plain of Yisgard. Now Yisgard is a plain of heroes and glories, where war is raged and valour is proven. It is a battleground for eternity. On the outer plain of Yisgard, heroics are encouraged to prove one's valour, and this mechanism means that everyone gets fast healing too. And every morning, the slain all get to rise again to enjoy another glorious day of battle and competition. It's very similar to Valhalla in a lot of respects. And once the fighting is over, all the victors get to retire to the feasting hall of the deity Cord in his valiant hall. Our heroes get to fight during the day in the plains of Ida and return for celebrations. On the second night there, in the feasting hall, a frost giant lumbers to our table and bellows. Today you slayed my comrade, a fire giant called Horton Man. Tomorrow I challenge you all, him and me against you mortals. Jess is quick-witted and snatches up this opportunity for some mischief. Okay, Frosty, we will take you and hot man on. But tonight, I challenge you to a drinking competition. 
The frost giant froze his head back and laughs. Ha ha ha! A gnome drinking against a frost giant. You sure do think a lot of yourself. But as Frosty was tossing his head back to laugh, Jess had cast Miss Lead and turned herself invisible while leaving an illusion of herself still there. Her illusion starts to drink illusionary kegs. Dry. Frosty was keeping up at the start, but slowly fell behind and drank himself, well, not under the table, but definitely on top of it and crushing the place while the room was spinning. After a night of wrestling and feasting, our characters find themselves on the plain of Ida, looking for the giants. Hot Man was raised at dawn and should be around somewhere. A giant bellows out and up from some large rocks the heroes can see the giants in cover. Gaza is on point and jumps up on a large set of stairs and casts Disintegrate on Frosty. The green ray hits true and the giant starts to glow. The giant swears, Yavla Peak, and vanishes leaving only dust. Hotman has been through this before, but this is the plane of valor and he fights on. As the heroes fight the last giant, a Marilith portals in. Now, Marilith's top half is human, but with six arms, and she has very fiendish features. She is scantily dressed and uses barbed chains to clothe her. In her hands, she wields barbed chains as weapons. Her lower half is a snake's body from the waist down. She glances around the battlefield and sees Hot Daniel doing a poor job of concealing himself behind a rock half his size. She dashes in and releases a fury of attacks from her chains. She has a lot of skill and quickly starts to wear down Hot Daniel. Hot Daniel cries out. Oh my ta, stop it, go away. Guys, get over here and help me. Another being portals in nearby where the Marilith entered. A human with blonde hair and dressed in black. He hides near a rock outcropping while he gets his bearing. But Ben and Mac are just finishing off Hotman and turn to race up and join in the fight with the Marilith, followed by the human who portaled in, coming in with a sneak attack and Jess running in to cast heal on Hot Daniel. The Marilith realises this is not a great opportunity and backs away and portals off. Okay, who pissed off the snake lady, Mac asks. Yeah, yeah, she she was vicious, Gaza replies. Turning around, they all face the human who's standing there. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, hi, I, I, I am Nern. Uh, g- g- you, you guys did, did well to fight off the Cathazar. Hi, uh, Nern, was it? Why don't you tell us all about this snake lady while we try to figure out what is going on? Jess asks. Oh, 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 the, the Marath. The Marath is known as the Cathazar, and, and she is an agent of a demon lord of the abyss called Amuel. We, uh, what have you done to gain the attention of a demon lord? The group all look around, not trying to make eye contact while whistling and kicking stones and acting nonchalantly. Ah, my lord, Nern goes on, has sent me to keep an eye on on the Cathazar. I've been watching her to try to understand what she seeks, and that I have discovered so far that Amuel believes he has discovered a way to double his power. My lord and I would rather not see Amuel gain this power. We have, we are unsure of how Amuel will, 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 will be doing this. I have learnt that the Cathazar, she seeks the descendant of one called Did. She must believe one of you is to be that person. I've also heard her speak of a bastion of unborn souls when she has spoken about 
the hunting of the descendant of Did, so that the worm may be tamed, she has said. Amuel is powerful, but should he increase that power, it would go ill for many. Since she has a vested interest in you, and I an interest in her, we should profit by working together. Will you let me travel with you? Jess sits down and goes to scry. Let me see if I can find her. Meanwhile, Hot Daniel's starting to ponder all the information he's been given. Okay, guys, I... I've I've heard tales of, of a did. There there is a song called Did's Farewell, and it tells of many ancient druids fighting with a devastatingly powerful red dragon. The dragon was mortally wounded and did slain, as were many of the other druids. From the druidic order, though known they were known as the, the Church of Elements, and Going by what I, I reckon, there, there would probably have only been one dragon that that song could have been about that would have been a Shardalon. And for that time and place in history, it could only have been him. He, he was worshipped like a deity. However, he was slain and driven off. His cult of followers disbanded, and he was assumed dead. The only other thing that comes to mind involving this might be a group called the Guild of Sleep, you know? They might know more about this bastion of unborn souls. Just stand, stands up after a few minutes. I found her. She's in a room full of chains hanging from the ceiling, and there is a pentagram drawn on the floor in the corner, and a bed of roses that lie in the other corner. But how did she get those roses and who would they be for the heroes have many possible ways to go forth from here they decide to make their way back to the valiant hall to see what else can be learnt over dinner with the deity cord who is god of strength and courage but more on that next time